Hi everybody, it's Cinnamon Cooney, your art sherpa, and today I'm going to show you how to paint these awesome rainbow fantasy eyes. Enough adjectives there, I don't even know. On the mic today is John. Hi guys. He is co-hosting with me, and what that means is that he switches the cameras, reads your questions, so if you guys have an urgent question during this live, he can ask me. Um, I'm much better at art questions and math questions or spelling questions, just to keep that in mind, <laughs> 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 or geography or any of those things. Um, definitely, I'm excited about today because it's a really fun project for the big art quest about face. That's where we meet weekly and talk about things that are related to portraiture and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Today, we have a 9 by 12 canvas that has been gessoed black, or you could just paint it black with black paint, whatever you have, whatever works for you. I'm using this uh, black color gesso because I just really like it, and it matches the black paint I have in my tubes, the Mars black. So that's why I like it. Today, I'm going to cover a couple special different things. Because we've, we've done a little bit of eyes. If you've been in the, you know, about face, you know we've covered eyes. We've covered a whole bunch of do's and don'ts about eyes and really looked at their structure and how we can uh, paint them better. And we've got a whole bunch of videos about that. But on this particular one, I'm going to talk about how to get these drips under control, right? Mm -hmm. So we're using all those skills we had before. How to get these drips under control, but most importantly, how to draw that other eye. So, yes, there is a uh, traceable. The materials are in the description below, and there's a link to the artsherpa.com where we have the traceable for you, and no, tracing's not cheating. That's not how we feel about it here at all. It's just a method of art. It's an art skill. But for those of you that are working on your drawing, you guys have asked me to demo how to draw that other eye, so they're not, like, crazy different. Hmm. Because, I mean, if you want them to be crazy different sizes for emotion, that's awesome. Or if you're foreshortening them, that's awesome. But if you don't mean for one to be a completely different size than the other, that can be a little frustrating. Mm, yeah. How many people do we have here today? Oh, my gosh. I have to go over and look at it. All oh, the people. Look, all the people here. I haven't even gotten back over to I the screen. I just saw the chat. I did some weird stuff today. I, I made an event on Facebook I, in our uh, Art Sherpa group official and invited everybody. And then it only let me invite people it was really weird. It only let me invite like a small number of people. <laughs> well, Houston was just asking. Uh, she wanted to know what are light keepers mm. as you squeak your mic. So my mic is squeaking? You, when you were taking oh, a drink. Oh, I was drinking coffee. Squeak, sippy, squeak, sippy. Squeak. So in our community, we have Sherpettes. That's everybody who comes and paints with us. And we have little brushes. Those are younger people or young and hard people who are new at painting. And then we also have light keepers. And these are people who actively work in the community to just improve the well-being of all of us a little bit. They like up posts you know they always take the time to comment on um, people's artwork when they share it and oftentimes they'll put wishes or good intentions into their canvases to help kind of improve the better <laughs> vibes in the universe they're just you know you know how there's someone that girlfriend or that friend that never hesitates to say something nice to you be like oh i really love your shoes they're kind of light keepers aren't they they just mm -hmm. they have that time to say that extra nice thing to you and we have a bunch of those in our community and we're like they're like light uh, lighthouses i'm going weird well no, i was you know, that's great <laughs> I, was, I was i was over here and i was like all right so how many people do we have in the room and i looked over and it said three are waiting and i was like three three seems like a low number for us, for us, it seems like a lone, uh, like like. Did odd. the stream fail? Hit, oh no, I hit refresh and it was three hundred and twenty-three. Oh. <laughs> so <laughs> I was like, I, was like, I realize weird. I'm not Matt Pat up in here with but, fifty thousand yeah, people like, in the room, but usually it, we get more than three. People are like, no, no rainbow eyes today. No rainbow eyes. I, I RSVP to your event, but I'm not coming. So they're all here. We're Sherpa for sure. Okay. So we we gotta you know. Let's well, everybody do a little Sherpa dance because we, we are Sherpa. I have. I, I think I have. I have some. Some. That's just. It. If three hundred of us show up anywhere, we've decided that is our. Uh, we're like Sparta. And we do a little dance. And we do a little dance. And we do that because it's really fun to be here with all of everybody else celebrating painting today. So if you're at home with us, you should get up and dance with us. This helps loosen you up. Remind, remember that you're you're here and we're alive and we're celebrating today. And if you can't get up and dance, then wiggle those fingers and wiggle those toes because it's important for you, for you guys just to dance with us too. So thank you for joining us today. And actually, we decided that all the people that dance to the grooves are Sherpazoids. Sure, that's right. They are Sherpazoids. <laughs> all our dancers. So there's just room for everybody here. Let's get this thing sketched in, Mr. Yeah. Cooney. Do you have the picture in picture? Uh, for people mean, following along at the home. Oh, look at that. Look at that right there. All right. So now to do this, I have this little tool here. I've, gosh, I've loved this since art school. This is a T-square. Right. 
And uh, I specialize in advertising arts, so I had to live with these a bunch and triangles. <sighs> but this has definitely stayed with me in my practice since then. Mm -hmm. I love them because they help me draw a straight line. Because straight lines and I are not necessarily friends. Mm -hmm. Right? So right here, about four and a half inches from the top, right? I'm going to make a little mark. And then I'm going to come across using my T-square across the whole thing and just very lightly. This is a General's white charcoal, uh, white charcoal pencil. You can also just sharpen chalkboard chalk. <laughs> If you just don't have one of these or don't feel like running out and getting one, they're just nice to have, but they're not necessary. And, you know, if you drop them, then the lead gets all breaky. So it's not something I would like put everybody like into having to get. Now our eyes are going to be, and we measured this earlier, they are two and one, two, three, four, five, five eighths. Uh, they're two and five eighths inches. So from the outer... I, I draw my first eye on my right side because that's my strongest side. I'm going to come over about six inches and make a mark. And then I'm going to come over two and five eighths inches and make a mark. Right? Guess what I know then? What do you know? I have to have a two and five eighths inch in space between these two eyes. Because what do we generally have between our eyes is an eye's width of eye. I thought there was a nose between the eyes. There is a nose between them, but it's a, it is mostly... Obviously, people don't are not manufactured that evenly, but mostly it is an eye's width apart. Ah. And then I'm going to make this eye also two and five eighths inches. So that's the width of my two eyes. So already in taking that step, I've improved my chances of having very similar shaped eyes. Symmetrical eyes. Symmetrical, right? Now, when I'm drawing my eyes, you know, there's a couple things that we, we know. We know we want... To have like a little tear duct coming down and the eye comes up. Now my eyes might be slightly different shape than the traceable. Because anytime you freehand something, you're freehanding it. Right? But I'm going to do my basic where I curve up and over. Creating my shape. We know that what's in here. There's a big ball in here and the lid sort of stretches over the ball. It's kind of fun to think about even if it is a little gross. I'm going to come down a smidge from this first. I, and I like to bring this down. This is where my lower lid is. That's a shape I like to have. So I'm going to definitely, definitely have that little shape there. Right? And then once I have that in, what I can do is I can come over here. And I know how high I can measure, right, how high this is. So this is one, I love Ken, Ken Chon's counting out the eights with me earlier today. One. Except I think you're now on this. Uh, oh, yeah, you're, you're on it. All right. Okay. The, it's, the, it's the long lines, right? Or yeah, the, the long lines are eights, and the short ones are, are uh, 16s. I feel like this is, okay, so. Okay, let right. me see if I can read one, it from here. Two, three, and three eights. Yep, that looks about one right. One and three eights. Okay. So over here, what I'm going to want to do from the bottom line is also have a one <laughs> and three. I'm not saying I'm fast at it. I'm just saying this is how I do it. <laughs> I'm just going to make sure for the bottom I'm one, two, three over. <laughs> there we go. And this is just a little guide. It's going to help me try to have that side similar now, if up here on the height, right? This is what I'm trying to do. I'm trying to make sure. Another thing you could do, by the way, uh -huh. if you didn't want to measure it out, T-square. <laughs> could, could, could. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> See? And there, I was off. I measured wrong. <laughs> but that's what you can do with the T-square is you can do this top line. But the trick is, is you're just trying to create constrained spaces that allow you to approximate. Because these won't ever be exact carbon copies of each other. But they'll be very similar. Now, let's say I didn't have a T-square and I was bad at maths. Oh, dude. Could could I just use the traceable? You just use the traceable. Is that okay? It's so okay. I've just been asked to demo this. And okay. I just thought, well, it's alive. And we can demo it. And then people who've been asking will now know. I'm going to make a short, easy video about <laughs> this. But that doesn't take long. But I know you guys like sometimes to have a little bit more of those explanations. Yeah. So I'm going to come over here, and I'm going to do... But you can see already that's helping me 
right? S make these two spaces very similar. Now, if there's an imaginary nose down here, which there totally could be, or you can use the tear ducts, right? You need to create kind of a, uh, I, I'm gonna go like this, an eyebrow line. So generally I like to make a little straight line up, but we paint a lot of this out with our black gesso when we're done. Okay, now I've got that, and I know I'm gonna want it to, end. I like my eyebrows to end just a smidge past my eye, just a smidge. I don't go free to Kahlo, but you know, I like some, just a little extra brow hairs, just a smidge past. That's a preference that I have. You might have a different preference, right? So I know then, right? Yep. Where that's gonna be, right? Where those two things are gonna be for my eyebrows. It's gonna make my eyebrows a lot easier to do. But to, to do my eyebrows, I need to do a lid. So I'm gonna do my first crease and this particular crease is deep. And the reason I do this crease deep is so that there's room to put all the rainbow awesomeness on it. All right? That's why I, I did this this way with the deep crease. All right? And I'm going to come from the back here, kind of close to here, and just sketch this little line up, creating this little space here for these little lids. Just being awesome, like I do. You can do that too. Making awesome eyes. Yeah, we're making awesome eyes. And this is just what we're trying to do. We're just trying to make eyes that are awesome. And if ever you have a line you don't like, take a brush, you get in your water, and you can kind of smidge it out, even on the um, charcoal pencil. Ooh, you're just watering it out there. Yeah, you just water it out. That's why I like these is because they kind of tend to evaporate into the water. Mm. So if I'm having any kind of a problem with them, I can do that. It is important then to use a pretty decent gesso though, because otherwise you get. But now that I know where those lids are, then I can sit there and say, oh, I've got an eyebrow. Now you can take your eyebrow a little bit past this line if you want for the nostril mm -hmm. matchup, because you can either match them up to the corners of the nostrils or the corner of the eyes. Either will kind of get you through. And I'm gonna make an arc. And if I needed this eyebrow arc to be exactly the same, what could I do? Use a traceable? No, I could drop another T-square line across at the top of the arc. All See? right, well, I guess you could do that too. Yeah, right, so like if I'm having trouble matching up my arcs, then all I'm doing is sitting there going, oh, I gotta, I start here, then I gotta kinda go here, and you're gonna end up with eyebrows that are fairly uniform. And Man. that's how you get some symmetry. There's way more math and engineering in this face than I thought. Well, that's why <laughs> this is different. A lot of you might have been like, oh my gosh, are we doing eyes again? But I'm just showing you another way that you can get these in because, you know, if you're doing the traceable, you can probably just sort of watch this and then just start once your image is all in. But if you don't know how to draw these in and you've been wanting to, it can be really frustrating and actually you might not know that it's a very simple trick or process like this, you know. And not to brag, but I mean, my thing is not that different than Mark Criley's, so just saying. <laughs> Go Mark. Go Mark. Uh, you know, similar process. Eyebrows are sisters, not twins. Eyebrow I like that. Who said that? Lisa did. Lisa said they're sisters, not twins. And eyes are sisters, not twins, too. I mean, don't go the full Shannon Doherty, but, you know. no Love, Shannon. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> Some of your beauty is in your lack of symmetry. All right. So once I have that in, right, and I've got them kind of similar, then I know I've got my uh, iris in here, right? So I can start putting that in like I would. You can also measure this out if you have trouble matching these up. Yeah. Using your T-square method again. So there's just no end to how you can do this. You can really use this little tool to your advantage to the nth degree. All right, so now I have this in again, and guess what I can do? To erase the extra lines that I do not want. <laughs> yeah, that's right. This is how I do that. This is how we do, 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 do. Uh-oh. Got a cap plug on my tube of paint. Signs you haven't been cleaning out your caps enough. So these are over here to the side just so I can work with them. And I'm going to take, this is a nice number six, and I'm going to just real quick 
paint out the extra lines that I'm not wanting. And if you have chalk everywhere, all over your canvas, you just go around this and give it another coat of black gesso. That's all you got to do. Just give it another coat of black gesso. And it's really only important where the lines come out of where you're going to be painting the eye in anyways. The other reason sometimes I like black gesso is it matchy matches super well. Oh, you mean just from... Yeah. It matches, you know, sometimes with some paint, when you paint back over it, it like you can really see the paint spot. Gesso does not do that to me as much. I'm not saying it doesn't do it, it just doesn't do it to me as much. So see, I'm just kind of cleaning up the extra lines I did not mean to have. And that's what you can do. Or you could water them out and then paint over it. This is just, this is just you do you. You, you do you, boo. <laughs> All right. So hopefully this cleared up and some of that out. mystery. Lots of people thought this was great. Because <laughs> if you didn't know this, you wouldn't know this, would you? Mm -mm. You would never stop to think to use these tools and measurements to just make it the same. But that's how you would if you were trying to do that. Especially if you're doing a believe face mm -hmm. or any type of fantasy work. That's really something that you're going to have to do. Now I'm going to take an even smaller bright. This is a number two. And I'm going to load this up just real quick because I want this to sort of stay here as I'm painting. And I'm going to just sketch in with paint real fast my lines so I know where the heck they were. Otherwise, as I'm painting it in, I might lose them. And this is just to help me. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just needs to be there. So I'm like, oh, yeah, I have lines. I might put this, like, this line will end up being in shadow. And that's fine. Very, so what I'm doing here is I'm just brushing on the edge here. This is also going to help the eyebrows be brighter when I paint over it. If you're doing this with student paint... Right? Mm -hmm. The problem is, is sometimes student paint does not coat over the black. And the fix for that is, is to kind of do this in the Grisai method, which is a black and white painting, a value study of it, and then paint over it because that will lighten it up enough from the. Now, we did that, the apple. Was we did apple. the apple in that. That would be a good way of doing that. So we should so probably. You yeah, you don't lose your eye, uh, you don't lose your lines, you don't lose your stuff, you just. So if you're unfamiliar with, with the Grisai method, we, we can put a link, can't we, in the iCard? Yep. So that you can find that other Grisai Apple project. Exactly. Which I'll is, put that in the link. Yeah. And it's in the, you know, 2017, um, 2016 Big Art Quest. And w what we'll do is on the uh, on the website, on our website, theartsherpa.com, when you go to the project page for these eyes, I'll, uh, I'll put that link there as well. Oh, cool. That'll work. And so then everybody that, can just find it if yeah. they need it. And that's one of the great things about the website is we're really able to build up a lot of resources there for you guys to view from. Yeah. So. I'm going to just swirl this in while I'm at it. You're just filling it in a little bit? Yeah, I'm just going to, just so I have it. I'm just trying, because that'll let me see the weight of it and how they're doing. Because, again, they're sisters, right? Mm -hmm. I like that. I'm going to use that forever. <laughs> Thank you for that. You'll always know it was you. No. I'm going to just kind of sketch in with my paint. That's what I like to do. Well, this sketch in with my paint. A little bit, so I'm like, okay, now I know where my eyes are. Now, will this white undercoat, underpainting there help with the other colors? Yeah, it will. It, like, on, on my paint, I'm painting all professional paint. I'm still going to do, like, this little bit helps there. Um, but if I were painting student, I would absolutely make a soft grayscale study of this, you know, and, and, and just have that right there on the eyes so that my paint wasn't trying to cover black. Maybe we'd, we maybe we could do that a grisai eye at some point. That would be really great. People a love grisai that. Eye. A grisai eye. You cr a crying grisai eye. Oh. A crying grisai eye. Boy, you've thrown down for the next B B A Q big art quest for everyone who is wanting to know what B A Q stands for. Yeah, that's what nonsense we're up to. It's big art quest. So in our eye, in our eye, I've got very coolly. I've got magenta, quinacridone magenta. I don't have an orange here because I'm going to make my orange with my cad medium yellow and my quinacridone magenta. Ooh. Right? Uh-oh. What's that? 
Oh, no, I have it. I was like, where's my purple? But it was just in a weird <laughs> location, right? Well, I see Diogeny purple right there. <laughs> and I know that you can't go too far without some purple being around. It's true. I have some I have some issues of purple in my life. You notice there's a lot of purple paintings? You, you know, might have. I'm, I'm with some of the ladies out here. Why aren't there some really high art paintings of like a grisai brownie or a grisai pizza? There is. Oh, okay, cool. I got to find some of that. Of course I'm, there is, I was guys. thinking like, you know, that's, you know. I would like to see a grisai brownie. I think the biggest myth <laughs> about um, fine art is that it's uh, stuffy or unrelatable. Mm. Um, and actually, that's not true. Um, and to see that point, check out um, a website. This is Colossal. Jenny oh, yeah. just squealed. I heard her in Australia. <laughs> um, this is Colossal. And look at what people are doing. And you're going to be like, well, I would own any of this. This is all exciting to me. Yeah. And, and that's because real fine art, real collectible art, art that's in galleries, is often incredibly delightful mm. and totally relatable. Yes, sometimes paint people paint with body stuff. That happens. That does also happen in art. Or people are into shock art. And so they do images to be shocking. I mean, there's all kinds of personalities and things in art. But... There's also some really good stuff out there. So be open-minded because it might be better than you think. Sometimes you'll see artists that you find almost palpably upsetting when you see their work. You'll be almost mad mm. that they made it. That's always an interesting experience when you find yourself kind of cussing to yourself at the museum. They don't like that. Everyone in chat was like, how do you spell grisai? And I was like, so it, I put a link Who up Who knows, there. man? Not a, didn't I say at the beginning, no spelling, no math? <laughs> I, I, I <laughs> feel put a like link I up own that. <laughs> I put a quick link up so that everybody could find uh, find that. So, <laughs> and now you're all going. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. No spelling, no math. Let's look at the palette real quick. So this is how I'm going to get my rainbow. I've got two of my drops of my glazing liquid. This is going to help slow down the drying time of my paint. To slow down the drying time of my paint, I also have this really cool mister, and it does a micro mist, so I don't get big fat water droplets. But it's going to help me do my drips later. Okay. Mm. Quinacridone magenta, cad yellow medium, phthalo green, phthalo blue, dogs eating purple, and two pops of titanium white, plus the glazing, a little black, and this. And then at some point, I will get out a soft body or fluid white because I want to do that that really characteristic star because this, this, these eyes see the world through, they don't see it through rainbow colored lenses. I mean, rose colored lenses is rainbow colored lenses, so they're serious. I am going to take. No, well, I would like to do my cat's tongue, but I guess I'll get a different one. Because <laughs> that's not available to everybody yet. I'll get a Philbert. <laughs> no, while you're grabbing that, uh, uh, Carolyn said that she likes to use the Sherpa trick of uh, drawing one eye, then tracing it, and then flipping, flipping it. it. Yeah. That's so that she can, get, she can get even ones. That'll probably end up in my hacks video. Hacks. Hacks. Hack of the art. Hack of the art. Got so many art hacks. I think that's it's the crazy. oldest hack on the planet is art hacks. Like, I, I bet you the first one was like it was Ugg telling Oog that you could use red paint on a wall. Yeah, it probably really was. All right, so this here is a number two black pearl filbert. And so filberts look a little bit like um, a tongue, a cat's tongue specifically, though actually a cat's tongue is like this brush because it comes to a point and it has three, it's like three brushes in one brush. I really like it, but it's not available to you guys yet, so you don't get it. So I'm going to do a filbert. <laughs> And I'm going to load my brush up with a little bit of my glazing medium simply because my studio is very hot and very dry. We're into summer now, and I'm going to need it to keep my paint from really, really skinning. So I've put a little white into my brush. I'm going to come over to my quinacridone. You can see I've kind of got this going here. And I'm going to start painting in around my eye here. So I like to take this pink forward a little bit because I know... That I like the eyes to be a little bit forward. And I've got to get this first coat in. There is a lot of coats in this painting, man. It's like, it's like you know, a winter yeah. coat check. Yeah, there's many, many layers. This painting is layer heavy. And when we get into the drips, you're going to be surprised at how we get control over our result. So that was a couple of the things I wanted to resolve in this particular project for you guys. Is this experience y'all are having... Mm. with the drips so I'm painting this here I'm coming underneath because that's the first stage of my rainbow right and then I'm going to do some up here maybe I'll get a little more quinacridone on this one 
Now, one of the things about the magenta is that it's pretty transparent. So even a very good quinacridone is going to be more of a glaze than an opaque paint. Don't let that disturb you. Don't let it bug you at all. It's totally cool. And you're just putting in this first layer. Your first layer is going to get you there. A little white, a little glaze. We're just working it out. So many layers to come. One of the things you'll notice if you're working with a filbert is that it has a very soft brush stroke. And it tends to blend very nicely. And because the edges on it are very fine, it does a lot of work in a limited amount of space. So it's a, it's a happy brush to be getting into. I'm going to pull some just quinacridone. Come right here at the corner and underneath a little bit. And you can see how the layering is really helping. I'm going to come in the crease here and sort of pull this color up a little bit darker through the lid, rounding it up. That's what we're doing, because we can. Do it over here, too. This is a very relaxing paint, I should tell you. I really enjoy designing it. Raven says it's all about the rainbows. Dude, there, there's all good things start with a rainbow, man. <laughs> and and Rainbow says, I am a rainbow. <laughs> <laughs> so this is awesome. <laughs> no, you could, life needs galaxies and rainbows, doesn't it? So you can see how I'm having a lighter value here at the corner. This is like your makeup. You can come up with some really cool eye paintings if you watch makeup tutorials, by the way. Because those guys are artists. And you can paint all those eye makeups. I'm adding a little more white to my, my brush, and I'm kind of lighting the corner here. You know, and I like to definitely, definitely take the tear duct down, out a little bit. Right? Because that always goes a little bit past. And I like to accentuate that. Not because my eyes are crying or anything. I don't know. Just blending that out. Pulling that highlight. And so on this side, you know, my highlight and my paint isn't drying enough for the to stick. So you're either doing wet into wet, dry brushing, or glazing, and that's everything we've got going on here. Sometimes I'll rinse out my brush to pull the white pigment out of it. And I'll get just a little of my quinacridone, just to make sure that this is quite bright where I want it to be, you know. And the reason we're working this small is so that we had lots of time to get this all done. Mm. Now, coming up next, you know, what's my next color? What is it? Uh, In a rainbow, it's orange. Orange? I was going to say, I'm looking at your eyes over there and going to cheat. And I'm going to say, maybe orange? Right. So let's get some orange going in here. And that's just the quinacridone and the uh, cad yellow makes a really nice orange. And I'm going to, on the edge of this brush, see how I'm just sort of brushing this back and forth? That's where I'm getting a nice soft blend. Look, and I know I'm going to be up in my eyebrows in a minute, guys, but I just got to up at the lid. I'm going to make sure I have a little white in there. And just like let this blend be a little more pastel. I'm going to be coming back, interestingly enough, with a little blue later to get the crease, but this is just where I'm creating the underpainting that allows me to do this. Get some glaze if you need to improve the flow. The art must flow. So just blending that back and forth. And we're going to be doing a lot of layering of the space here. So things that, that you know, were in one space will inform what comes next. And that layering will also help the paint cover the black. I really like painting on black canvases, as y'all might have noticed. And I don't mind dealing with the challenges they give me because I think the results are super enjoyable and very dramatic. If you did this big, you can learn this technique with me small and do this big, you are going to be blown away. It was the first thing my mom said when she saw it. She's like, are you going to do it big? <laughs> I'm like, later. So the areas of the most trouble are going to be through the yellow. It's going to take you a couple coats because both the yellow and the quinacridone are quite transparent on a good day. But they're worthwhile colors, so I think it's worth struggling through. 
And we're just getting this first underpainting done, right? There we go. I'm going to rinse out my brush. I'm going to get my yellow. Yellow, yellow, yellow. And in this, I'm going to add a smidge of white. Otherwise, the coverage is just not even going to be there. I'm going to come into my orange and just blend this space. Okay? Just blending it for this part of my rainbow. I am going to be shading all this area and all of that. I'm right now just trying to get this first layer in. That first run of color. Mm -hmm. And then we'll come back and work, work, work it. Are you? Yeah. Well, you know, while you're working that, I was, I was, I was wondering. Robbie. Hi, was Robbie. Robbie was feeling a little missed out, little, little, little missed out because Robbie wasn't here when we had our our little dancing going on. Uh oh, and so, Rob. And so I figured. Are we gonna Sherpazoid? I think you're gonna Sherpazoid a little bit while you're painting, just because, you know. It's just I think nice I, I can glaze. Shirt. I can stop. I need a sippy sippy. Need anyways. a sippy sippy. We're I double Sherpa, by the way. So thank you for that, guys. Thank you for the shares. Thank you for letting people know that this is here. Yeah, we like having you guys out here with I us. I see your posts out online. I love when you're like, "This is totally the best place I've ever learned to paint." Thank you, and you guys share it. I'm like, "Oh, likes." We, I, you know what? I love, love, love having you guys. Oh, our newsletter. Tell them. Oh, we sent out our first newsletter. Check your spam folder. <laughs> It may be in your promotions folder. Promotions, probably. Probably promotions. But yeah, it was awesome. Uh, Lisa and Cinnamon spent yesterday, yeah, and they they got all their 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 newsletter together, and uh, so we got that sent out. We're gonna we're gonna be sending out more of those now, aren't we? We are. Basically, the newsletter is gonna kind of. Right now, we're doing it a look back. Look back. Because I think it's hard to know everything we do. I'm doing so much stuff right now. I think it's hard to keep up. I I can barely keep up. And we're here. Yeah. So the newsletter like lets you know what dropped mm -hmm. and what you might be interested in and all the things because you know we've got art game, we've got artist training clubs, we've got new product announcements, there's just stuff happening. Yeah. So in a really quick way you can be like, oh, 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 got it, got it, got it with all the links. And we're just going to get better at it. It's it our usual kind of style of like, just just the facts, ma'am. Super dragnet. <laughs> but it was fun. Can I get a coffee I reheat on my yeah, coffee? Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'll get you. So you dance and you're going to do your do your. Oh, I love some color. I gr uh, well, what comes next in the rainbow? Green. Green comes next in the rainbow. Right? Green palette cam. All right. So I'm going to rinse this out. And I like to mix a little yellow into my green because I, feel I like the phthalo to be very bright. So. What are you going um, now, remember, if you guys are not in the U.S., your paint may have be the same color but have a different name. So check the pigment codes, and they may actually be the same. Like uh, Windsor Blue is Thalo Blue. Now, you're kind of, it looks like you're, is that glazing? Is that how it's? Is that, is well, that? it's in a sense because, like, that's dry now, so I had to add some glaze. Oh, so on one side you're glazing, one side you're dry brushing-ish? Well, both. Both. It's just both. Probably looks more interesting than it is. <laughs> <laughs> uh -oh. Right now what it's we're doing that. is just making sure that we are putting in this base of this rainbow on these eyes that we can come back and build on. Because, we, you know, you've got to have a highlight here and a highlight here and some different shading. And then we've got to get the eye shape in there. And the best way to do that is just get that first layer of paint on. Get your paint on. And then you can come back and, you know, taste the rainbow. Yep, I went there. That happened. I apologize. I'm just known to do that. And I'm just trying to keep enough of my drawn lines in here, if you'll notice, so I don't lose them for later. Now, when I've got that in, I can come and get my blue. Oh, coffee. Coffee, 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 coffee. <laughs> I didn't know where to put it, so I just stashed All it. All right. I would crack a joke, but no politics. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Nope. 
but I want to because it's coffee. Nope. <laughs> All right. So blue, 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 a little white to make. So I find sometimes white helps thalo blue pop on a black canvas. And I'm going to blend this blue into my green space, right, and into my eyelid here. Now, a little bit when you're doing the thalo, because there's so much yellow in that green, there's going to be a weird little space, but we're going to fix that in a second, so don't worry about it. Right? Just, um, blue, ba ba dee ba ba da. All right. <laughs> I love that there's some people in the group that will be like, from two of my terribly sung bars, they're like, I know that song! <coughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> I know what she's singing, it's so crazy! So, just coming along here. We got to get bubble machine fixed. We do. I miss the bubble machine. My Ooh. Texas snowflakes are. Colleen wants this on a shirt that says, I love the Sherpa. Oh, that would be cute. That actually. would be cute. <laughs> we didn't even think of that. I'm going to take a oh. little of my purple and add a smidge of white to it. Gail just asked a really wonderful question that Hi, I should have thought about myself. Hmm. She was like, John, how would people sign up for the newsletter? And I was like, oh, that's oh, true. Oh, yeah. Go to our website and you join. And then you get you can get the newsletter that way. It asks you, I think. Well, yeah. When you sign up, uh, it just you, you can check in there that, hey, I'd like to get my newsletter. And then you, it just comes right out through our website. So if you're signed up on our website, that's how you get it. And uh, you know, we'll make sure that we put a link out there on our uh, on, on the on the website so that you can find the uh, the newsletter that just went out. We should be able to put a little archive of those up. Oh, so, that's a good idea. Yeah, so you can find those up there. We're like talking about adding cool things to it. We're just really lucky to get it sent out. You were, it was, you know, <laughs> we're like, hey, could we do this? And we're like, probably not work? today. <laughs> does it work? Yes, it works. And I'm like, oh, can I do a video message? Can there be secret messages? Jen's like, yes, 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 but not today. Yeah, we just wanted to get the first one out. So you guys could know what all is happening. Yeah. Because we just go, you know, we've had like, f I, I swear one of my, my very favorite is when people are like asking question if we had a painting, if I could do a painting. We've done it, but I've done so many paintings. Mm. And the way YouTube pushes stuff out, you might not even know unless you know how to search through my content stream. Yeah. So that's why it's really nice to be on the website because all of those, all the paintings are in a gallery that you can search through. I've taken just my purple, and I'm going to come along my crease line here mm -hmm. and just deepen this crease line. Ooh, I'm going to zoom in on that. Right. I'm just doing that. It's just a subtle little thing. You can do it on the other eye next? Yep. Okay. Oh. That's what I would be doing. I'm just trying to hold certain values, and so this is how I'm doing that. This is more of an illustrated piece, but I like doing that on occasion, and so this is fun for me. Fun for me. Second there. There we go. Fun for me. All right. So doing really well there. The other place I want to put dark color, and I think I'm going to get into my blue to do it, is I'm going to want to come under my tear duct a little bit where it comes down and under this lid. This is the first of many layers here. So many layers. That's why I didn't go big, 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 because I was like, oh, we will be there for seven hours. Though many people recently have been like, a seven-hour lesson would be so nice. Mm. I'm going to come and do the same thing here. So I'm just trying to create... This right now is I'm trying to place in some value information so later when I come through with refinement, because we all know that an acrylic painting comes together in like that last 30%. So, Or you might not. Guess what? Your acrylic painting looks crazy till the last 30%. <laughs> so don't panic yet. We got more stuff to do. I'm going to just maybe tuck a little bit there and a little bit there, and that's very good. Let's that out. Now, I'm going to come in and think about this a little bit, a little bit. A little bit? A little bit. I'm going to take my phthalo green and my phthalo blue and make my phthalo turquoise. Phthalo turquoise. And I'm going to just paint in this part of my eye with that dark color. Just doing that. Isn't that fun? Yeah. All right. <laughs> I 
So <laughs> there, there's, there's definitely a, a, a little, a little chat going on in here of how they would like to see this, this, these eyes on a black shirt. <laughs> okay. So we'll be you working on that. You guys can have anything you want. Yeah. We love y'all. So I'm definitely up for that. Yeah, I'm just thinking the newsletter is a good thing because, like, we got, you know, that way people could know if we were gaming. You if know, we were on Twitch doing something weird. Speaking of gaming, do you know who just walked in the room? No. Mr. CPG from... At VidCon? He's at VidCon. He's at in VidCon? his session. Yeah. It's like by the transit of power of YouTube, I'm at VidCon too. <laughs> Woohoo! Woohoo! Go run down to Franco and go, <laughs> lady with the box! <laughs> 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 and you know what? We, we saw his we saw his IHOP uh, broadcast this morning. We so we did. We were there virtually with you. Like so, this. we have some friends at VidCon. Yeah. We have Chris. There's Chris is there. You guys should be following him because he's going to be doing lots live. We have Ian Garland, the off culture crafter mm-hmm. that y'all know, and Stephanie Bergeron yeah, and, and P- Mark Bergeron and Peter from Cutbox and Peter from Cutbox. Yeah. And we, there's a bunch of people out there actually that we know that are there. Mm-hmm. So it's like we just have to go through our our, our whole, whole. We'd be here forever. It's like. Knowing all your friends are at the coolest party ever in your home working. Well, we had to stay home and do our homework. <laughs> we had we, we had, had summer school. Homework. We had summer school this year. We did, but for good good reasons. So much cool stuff is it happening, is. so it's okay. It is. We we were able to donate our, our tickets to good causes. So that's always so nice. Yeah. Oh my goodness! Just putting in this thalo green eye. I like that by the transitive property of YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> I feel like that's like something from a 1970s Shazam kind of. Yep. <laughs> that's cool. We're cool. It's cool. <laughs> All right. So that's awesome. Thanks, Chris, for stopping by. It's oh nice my to gosh, see you. I love that he came by. All right. So I've got both of those sort of in. Mm-hmm. So I can see where they are. Of course, if they need adjusting or whatever, I can do that as I'm painting. Now, m- interestingly enough, my uh, background eye color is like a little of my uh, thalo, uh, not the no, quinacridone magenta Quin- and a smidge, smidge of my yellow. And then I'm going to do something crazy. I'm going to add a little black to it. See that sort of reddish black? Oh. That's weird, right? It's weird, I know. And I'm going to grab some white. If I need a little more black to gray it out, I will. There we go. So this is, I don't know, I kind of think of this as my Morticia eye. This is the Adam's eye. Because they're just, um, this great color lets me say that there's some capillary stuff happening here. And I can shade it very easily, and there's just enough rosy in it that it actually starts to feel pretty real in the socket. Isn't that crazy? Mm-hmm. Just painting this in. This is the first layer. It is the first layer of eyeball. Many, many more layers are coming. Painting is a speed sport only if you're Tim Decker. I don't know what I'm doing right now. <laughs> <laughs> So John listens to my many characters. I'm not I'm not saying it's a Rip Van Winkle situation up in here, <laughs> but there are a lot of people that paint inside my head and sometimes they come with voices. <laughs> well, you know, we get to talk to each other sometimes with voices and they just they're now a witness to it. Yeah. Yeah, now other people know. I can kind of see like when I first started watching reality TV, I was like, there's no way these people do not know there's a camera here. Because seriously, if I was like in a conflict with somebody and there had been a camera, I would never, ever be able to stop being like, oh, if only there was a camera recording all of this so I could (laughs) prove my point. (laughs) But I can kind of see how sometimes you do forget that they're here. Mm. You know, because you get so busy in what you're doing and the camera's rolling and then the you comes out and then you're like, "Uh uh-oh, the mommy is showing. Oh, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna say thank you to KBM, and I'm gonna I'm gonna pass along her her comment. Oh, okay. She says thanks to everybody in chat in the mo- and the moderators. I, I appreciate it so much. I've got to run, but uh, but it was really nice today. She enjoyed her time coming and hanging on, and she oh. wanted to just say thank you and bless everyone. Oh my gosh! Thank you, sweetie. And thank you to all our moderators and the community who've made it fun. 
Because, you know, without you guys, this would just be us shouting into the darkness. It could still be. <laughs> it still could be. <laughs> but we love the fact that you guys are here with us because it, it, it really does make it I a lot I love that fun. this many people want to know how to paint rainbow eyes and to put them out on the internet. I think it really improves social media feeds in general. I do too. I, I love that we just, every once in a while, like, just drop a bunch <laughs> of rainbow something on everybody. And they're like, what's going on? It's a rainbow eye day. Mm. I like them. All right. I like them, too. All right. So what I'm going to do eyes. here, I'm going to go back into my colors. And the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to come back to my quinacridone in my cad yellow. And, again, I'm mixing much more to the pink than the yellow. And I'm going to get a little white. And a couple things are going to happen. First thing is going to happen is I'm going to paint this in the tear duct. Just a little bit. Doing that. And then I'm going to paint the lower lid. I have a thing about lower lids. It's a long running thing. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody who was a, a specialist in eye studies wrote us and was like, you, you paint a lot of eye diseases. <laughs> 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 I was like... I had no idea. I thought I was just painting really pretty eyes. And they were like, no. You, you like all of the weird eye things. And, and it, it's these these illnesses, and here's how you cure them. <laughs> we actually had a lot of that coming, too. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, that's good stuff to know. It's mostly nutritional. All right. So I'm and coming underneath the eye here. This is one of those weird things about in art. Because you do so much human anatomy... And human anatomy legitimately changes a lot over time and regionally yeah. and yeah, based on does. diet. It's it's amazing. So you end up learning some really, really interesting things. Yeah, you really do. Like among those weird anatomy things that women are better for, for space travel because they're hearts. That's true. We learned that. We did. Damn. Women are better for space travel. But I thought we learned that from Dom. We did, but that was in okay. the course of doing all of this. Because, <laughs> I don't know, we were talking about something in art, and it was just <laughs> like, like, oh, yeah, this isn't that interesting. And he was are like, better for space hearts. travel. Not to be sexist. I'm not trying to gender, you know, bias all, all the... No, they just have hearts that are better suited for it, which I thought was neat. <laughs> that is, isn't it? Just putting another little coat here to enrich the color. And also to paint out a boo-boo that I had over there. So I had a little boo boo out of here. I wanted to smidge out, and then I was like, "Well, if I do it over there, I got to do it over here." So what I do over here has to happen over here. Now I'm going to put in my eyebrows the first layer, the first layer, y'all, the, the first layer. This, yeah. So this isn't the first layer <laughs> of eyebrows. Oh, of eyebrows. Okay. So I'm loading my brush here on the edge. Which eyebrow are we going to do first? The right one? Yeah, always the right first. Oh, okay. Oh. And I'm going to just over my white brush up. A little, and if I need to get glazing medium to improve the flow, the paint must flow! To improve the flow, I'm going to just come along here. This is the first layer of brow with this. Come do this the other side. Many layers on these brows. I love that I have speed paint lessons, but I think it's so important we do some of these slowed down bits on occasion because I think they help those of you that are following along regularly be able to really expand what you're doing in your art practices. So see, I'm just flicking this out and I'm paying attention to that. So my little eyebrows. Whee! Now, guess what I'm going to get into? Mm. My purple. Purple. My purpy purple. I didn't even rinse out my brush. That's okay. There's magenta in there. And about the mid space, I'm going to come add this purple all the way down. See that? Mm -hmm. Purple, purple. Purple, purple. I forget that I have a mic on, so even if I'm whispering, everybody is hearing me. Mm -hmm. So I can be like brick from the middle. <laughs> brick from the middle. <laughs> going, 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 going. Ooh, page. That's a good question. Is there a hack to blend colors together? There are several there hacks are so to many blend hacks. colors yeah. together. So in acrylic painting, because it has a fast drying time, 
Your first way is the wet and the wet method. Both areas of paint are wet and you're li- lightly brushing between them to create a blended seam. Mm-hmm. The second way is glazing. That's when you're using something like this that allows you to thin the paint down to little sheets of transparent color that you can layer, layer, layer. And there's dry brushing, which is that you put a little pigment on a dry brush and then you're layering the paint that way, letting little bits of the dry paint kind of build up on the canvas and the color sort of intermix to your eye as you're going. Those are like the three ways of doing that. Hmm. So my hack for that would be that have all three skills in your pocket because if your paint's drawing on you, you need to have all three to get through the piece. Right. And then on top of that, you can do things with acrylic paint. Like, you might not know this, but you can do your whole underpainting. I'm misting right now so that it doesn't glop off of me. You can do your whole underpainting in acrylic and finish your painting out in oil. Mm. You just can't paint oil, um, acrylic over oil. So you can paint oil over acrylic, but not acrylic over oil. Does yes. everyone understand that? That's yes, super important. Only- There's not a lot of rules in art in any way. And, of course, in some sense, there isn't. But if you paint uh, acrylic over an oil, it will at some point slide off. (laughs) And not in a cool way where you're like, wow, that's performance art. Let's take like a lot of videos of this and put it on Instagram. But in a really horrible way where some of it peels, oh, it's just a hot mess. And that's if it doesn't craze and your varnish doesn't crack and a whole bunch of stuff doesn't happen. I mean, like, it's crazy what can happen, which is why I'm like, Try not to put oil in your paint because mm-hmm. oil and acrylic paint prevents it from bonding and adhering and binding and prevents the varnish from fixing in any layers that you put. It starts to all delaminate at some point. Yeah. And it might be today, but it might be six months down the road. <laughs> Fun fact. Fun fact. Fun fact. But you can do colored pencils over acrylic. Mm-hmm. People might not know that. Pretty cool stuff. I'm still going on my paint. Guess what I get to come do again? What do you get to do? Refine all these decisions that I've oh, made. more. Ooh, fun stuff. So it's good that I put out the water. I've still got this nice... Oh, wait, I grabbed my bright, didn't I? Mm. No, no. Uh, I'll get um, back into my filbert. I think it was Zuzu was asking, is black just so worth the purchase? <sighs> okay. I'm going to give you... You know, my full honest answer on this. For me, it is because I like the tooth to it. It's very easy to sketch on. It has an incredible matte finish. It's very opaque and paints over everything easily. Um, And it matches my Mars Black acrylic paint. Right. So it's incredibly useful for me. Um, If I was super, super, super tight on a budget and I could only buy black paint or black gesso... I probably would get the black paint. Yeah. So, because, you know, that's just the thing to think about, right? Because you've got to always make everything you're doing sort of work within what you need out of it. But if you have it in budget, it's a fantastic product, in my opinion. In my opinion. So it's good if you can add it to your tool, to your painter toolkit, but n- yeah. not to stress over it. Yeah, don't stress over it. And and, it, and you find it is a useful tool. It's not Super a sur- useful. It's not superfluous. No. Now, I try not to give you guys superfluous tools. Um, And we don't generally talk about something that I haven't at some point made a decision was worthwhile to have in my studio. Mm -hmm. So I've got a little, uh, this is a darker pink I'm mixing this time. I'm taking a smidge of the white over to the quinacridone. You know. The auction noises are so important. So hey. I'm just making sure I've got this sort of here. Well, either you make them or I do. Somebody's got to make them. <laughs> I might even add a couple of streaks of this sort of mid-tone pink to the front of my eyebrows while I'm at it. Look at that. Just layering. Layering. We don't want to overpluck. Hmm. <laughs> I don't like any of my eyebrows plucked. That hurts. Does it? <laughs> You're like, Ow. I'm not into plucking at all. What is this nonsense? <laughs> I'm going to grab some just quinacridone. I'm going to come here. And I like to take this even a little bit into my black a bit, softly blended, and I'm going to just kind of work this back so it's very bright. So Matthew is like, is is anyone else getting Lisa Frank vibes off of this? Oh, I hope so. Who doesn't? Li- I almost hashtag this Lisa Frank, but I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> so, yeah, there's some... There, you're feeling some, some inspiration. Yeah, and actually I would say even more so than the first lips I did because, as Trade Chat pointed out to me, I should have gone magenta for the Lisa Frank oh. instead of CAD. That's, I was like, that is so true. 
This is why iterations are important in art, so see I'm blending this, and this is really now becoming quite a rich color here. Little Brush Olivia says, hello, Cinnamon. Hello, Olivia. She's so happy to be painting along with us today. I'm so Cinnamon. happy to have you painting along. I'm putting a dark color underneath this tear duct here, and I'm going to do the same sort of over here like we do. And just making sure that this is maybe a little along the lid there. Just a smidge though. I'm going to wipe off and maybe have to wipe off on my towel. And I'm going to get a little white onto it. I haven't rinsed my, my uh, brush at all. I'm going to come here. Let's put a little white right there and maybe a little bit right there. See how it blends into the pink? And then a smidge here. We're just trying to highlight some of this in this corner so that it's, it's very dimensional, like you do. Let's get into that orange. It's, we really got to pick up our orange a bit because the orange, remember we said, was the two hardest colors to, to get what we wanted out of it. Now for the part near the lid, I'm going to be a little more yellow, I think. And I'm going to just very carefully on the edge of my brush, reinforce that, that color transition that I put in earlier. And then as I'm coming up the eye, up in the lid, I've made a richer Might even take some of this up into this brow. Maybe a little bit over here. Come in, do the same. Just try to get that nice transition between the magenta and the yellow. Same underneath here. And this is kind of fun because when the drips are in, it'll do a whole thing. When the drips are in, you'll be sorry. No, <laughs> you won't be. All right, so we're just putting these values in, hopefully blending them down, and just enforcing this really nice lid shape. The second coat here, you know, it might be tempting to like cut that out in the painting lesson, but I honestly think it's super necessary. So that's why we still got it. I'm going to just make sure I have this little bright yellow at the lid and a little bit coming down from the eye. And then of course, here, just blending these all in. Now we're starting to really see them, aren't we? Our rainbow. Our rainbow eyes. Mm -hmm. So, shockingly not a super fast project, but I think one if you take the steps that you can really do. I'm going to get my green. Now, there were a lot of folks that were, or I shouldn't like say a lot, uh, but there were a couple of folks in here uh, so, you know, t talking about some different recipes for gesso and things. Sure. And we generally suggest you know, and that's great when you're an advanced artist and you really know about your materials. But when you're first starting out, you know, adding different things to your paint can add complexity. And <laughs> complexity is a nice way of saying your paint can fall off the canvas unexpectedly, and or it's, craze. It's not that or those bubble. Are, yeah, and you may want all of these effects as an advanced artist, and you'll know how to control them as an advanced artist. But when you're first starting out, it can be a real challenge. So by adding materials to your paint, especially when on a budget, you oftentimes risk ruining the paint yeah. as opposed to saving money. Th this is actually my parameter for this, right? Because mm -hmm. I have friends that make their own just on. So here's oh, yeah. my parameter. Here's my guideline on, on weird experimentation with paint. If you have the budget for it, mm -hmm. If losing the canvas or the painting is not going to be stressful, it's so. If you're at a place in your art practice where the just the process of doing the art is what's important to you, mm -hmm. just the act of creating it and its result is not somehow urgent to you because you're not selling it, you're not keeping it. There's right, you're like, 
you wouldn't want to spend 150 hours on a painting, do something experimental on it, plan to give it to somebody very important in your life, and that experiment somehow damaged the integrity of your painting. Yeah, like you know, what, if, what if it just turned cloudy because you right. used a weird PVA? Right. You, that, if you, you know, put weird stuff in your paint and you put a varnish over it, it can look great for a minute and then cloud yeah. or bubble or peel. So that, that is why I encourage using known products from known manufacturers. Just when you're starting out. Just you're, when you're starting out. When you're an experienced artist and you know what you're doing and you've got the room like Michelle Thurberg, mm -hmm. she does a lot of crazy experimentation. But that's that's she's that's what she's doing, yeah. right? She's at that place. She's really seated in that. And so if something goes like a little cray cray, she's like, ah, I learned from it. It's cool. Mm -hmm. But it's not the same as like I know when you guys have worked 100 hours on a set of clouds. Right. Then you would not be okay. Or, and I was just answering a question about an unexpected uh, isolation coat just cracking on a canvas. Yeah, and, and that's the kind of stuff we're thinking about. And one of the you know one of the challenges that you, know, you could face is that you know by by saying hey I can make my own X material whether mm -hmm. it's gesso or glaze or yeah. whatever it is, oftentimes you know. And even me, I say I mess up 50% of the time when I'm doing <laughs> stuff like that. So can you afford to, the, you know, if you're really on a budget, oftentimes the best thing for your money is to buy the thing that will yeah. work. There's an economy version of your gesso if you need a gesso. Yeah. That doesn't mean that you can't make your own black gesso using a gesso or something. Sure. Right, using paint and gesso. And, and it's just it's just one of those things, and you got to remember just because there's a, a vlog about it or a video about it, Sometimes that's not true. <laughs> yeah. So. And it's just hard to know when you're new. Yeah. We do. It, uh, oh, somebody said this a really good way. If somebody's a really good painter. Mm -hmm. The assumption is, is that they really, really know their product, which is not, believe it or not, not at all true. Different set of skills. Knowing your product and what it will do is material not necessarily science. the same as being really great at painting with it. Yeah. And that's, that's and material taking science. Taking blue. Yeah. Material science is different than than art skills, though it's good to have some material science understanding in your art skills. It's almost necessary. It helps because there's a lot of crazy information out there. You know, when as a sculptor working in bronze, we have to know a lot about the chemistry of the patinas and things like well, that. Well, because there's death involved, John. <laughs> well, yeah, but I mean, you know, <laughs> <laughs> but I think in all art practices, there's you not any your paint in general. If you're not painting with fire or some explosive component, is not going to explode. I'm sure you guys could find a way. I'm going into my purple. This is my second coat of my purple, and I'm just trying to make sure that my colors are rich and well developed. But I am not going into anyone's studio and telling them how to paint or how to work or what to do. This no. is just my best advice. You guys still have to do what's right for you. Mm -hmm. I've got to give you the best advice I can give you, but you guys have got to do what's right for you. <laughs> I'm just in my purple here. So there's another good question. How many times can you re-gesso a canvas? You know, man, I feel like there's a video in that. There's, that's a that's a. I don't even roll. know the answer. Uh, I, I could write some companies and ask what they think it is. So I think as long as adhesion works, you could go very far. Because you can make some pretty thick impasto paint. Yeah, so especially in acrylics. Not as much oil, but especially in acrylics. Okay. So I'm going to come work in... Well, actually, I'm going to come work the eyebrows a little bit. Okay. I'm going to get a little of my blue and a little of my white. And I'm going to come in here a couple places and then just... See how I'm coming along? I do. Just working my little eyebrows out a bit. Sometimes it helps me to turn my canvas upright, so I'm constantly working to my easy angle. See what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. Just something you might not know. All right. Are we doing okay? Yeah. This I is know it's not a super, super fast put together little oh, deal, no. but... Everybody's loving this. this okay, cool. Chats just, just go, go, go in. Oh, good. Every so once in a while, I like to give you guys something a little deep. Yeah, something deep. easy, something deep. Something easy, something deep. So, you know, since I did this in the fish recently, you know I'm going to drop some easy stuff soon. <laughs> That's how it works. Easy, easy, easy. All right. So, I'm just trying to show some white highlights. I need some whitish, pinkish highlights up here. Yeah. So, I'm going to come in and sort of resolve these brows. Resolve them. Resolve. Resolve them. Do, do, do. So, I'm getting some white and some pink. I'm loading my brush. <gasps> I'm going to come here and I'm going to just... I'm not sure. Add I'm some highlight hairs. 
I'm not sure why, but Janine thinks that Richard Hammond would definitely explode a canvas, and he's art trained. So, okay, if you're look, there's a really cool guy out of China that paints with fireworks. But, you know, Richard Hammond, he's We a have been called to theater. the painting with fireworks. You know what we learned in the middle of our backyard mm -hmm. <laughs> with the help of fire marshal? <laughs> <laughs> is it is not always a good idea to do everything you see on the Internet. <laughs> you have to wonder if that's like, <laughs> you know, the, the Top Gear guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, so uh, and, and we have a, uh, a friend that works in a paint company. He would love to burn the stuff, but he understands the dangers and the toxicity and the risk of tumors and kidney failure and all the stuff that can happen when you burn plastics yeah, you know really just look it up no ask a firefighter should i burn plastics and they're going to be like no. what no get away stop <laughs> <laughs> don't don't burn plastic <laughs> don't burn plastics guys don't do it all right i'm going to get into my white paint i'm going to mix up my um apparently i'm going to get the extra water off my thing because i'm going to work the inside of my eyes now mm-hmm Right now, you can actually. I might do one more thing on the outside. I'm gonna come get my blue, my blue, my blue, just my blue, blue, and I might add a little purple to my just my blue, blue. And I'm gonna just make sure that my crease, right, is a little bit deep and defined. How's that? Nice. A little crease, a little bit deep and defined. And I'm gonna come here, take that off. These are these sort of darker colors. And maybe just along this lower lid, I'm gonna pull this blue in a little ways. Just talking about value here. Oh, that got a little wonky on me, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna take my brush. What do you mean wonky? I went into my little pink area and I don't want it to be, so I just got my brush oh. damp and I'm erasing. Yes, Twix. Twix wants to go outside. Does she want to go outside? Wait in that baby. We do what baby wants to do. <laughs> All right, so we're doing really good. We're doing great. We need to shade the eyeball. We need to create value sets on this eyeball to help us see that it is round. So I'm going to take my pink. I don't think I have too much. Of, oh, I have a little bit of this yet. So it was the pink and a little bit of the yellow, but more to the pink. And then it was a little bit of black, if you remember. But now I'm going to wipe off my brush from that basic mix, but not rinse it so the pigment is there. And I'm going to get some white. And I'm going to start very lightly adding go. some highlight right here probably a little bit you can even glaze this you can dry brush or glaze it in either one will work just trying to create a soft value here to this space now if if just creating this sort of this would be the the highest part of the orb coming out see now i'm going to take a stab at this I think Javon Horn mm -hmm. is saying, uh, my problem is right now these eyes look sad. I was thinking that I was going to be, am I, am I doing something wrong? As, as we, this is, we're still in that undercoating phase. We're still in an undercoating phase. Um, generally, what will make an eye, will eyes look sad is if the brows are particularly pulled together and the lids are pulled in. Oh, if they're lower mm -hmm. and together. Yeah, Whereas if they're up and pulled out, they'll get happier. Okay, so that's something that's good to keep in These mind. These are slightly sad eyes. If you look at them, they're a little mm. bit. Gotcha. Uh huh. Yeah, I'm like that. I'm all tricky. I'm not trying to be tricky. I'm just saying I'm tricky. All right, I got some purple and some blue. I might add a smidge, just a smidge of black to it. And I'm going to get my glaze in on this mess. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to come here, and I know I've got to cast a shadow across my eye. So I'm going to come about midway up the lid and start casting my shadow from the eyeball across. Cast a shadow. A little bit of shadow casting. Just starting. And there's a lot of layers to the shadow. A lot of layers. 
just casting a little shadow. I'm going to get a little more of that mixture. I'm going to come underneath the eye, very close between the lower lid and the pupil. I'm going to add this blue at the corner. I'm going to very softly pull this in. My brush pressure is so light. That's how I'm getting that light shading there. And I'm definitely going to come in on the inside where the ball of the eye meets the tear duct. I'm going to say, hey, there's a little shadow here. Right? Because what are we trying to say? That this eye is round. That's what we're saying. Uh -huh. We're setting it in the socket is what we're doing. When you add the shadows to your eye, you're setting it in the socket. And depending on where the deepest shadow is on your eyeball, you can even talk a lot about where the light source is. So these are good things to think about. I'm doing the same thing on this side. I'm setting it in the socket, pulling up a little light shadow here. There we go. Might even come and add another layer of that shadow color to the top, across and right underneath the lid. Really, really have a thought about shading this. And I'm even going to grab a little black on my brush. I'm going to come under here. This is a very deep value, so it's going to really pop it and pull that out. Because I just definitely want to make sure that that shadow is here. I might have to pull my bracelet off to have good hand positioning, which I hate, but we're going to do it. Because we want good hand positioning. Now you're resting your hand on the yeah, canvas. Yeah, I have to to keep my hand steady. That's a thing I have to I'm do. I'm trying to show them what you got That's going on there. That's my strategy. You come over here so they can see that. All right. So see, I'm just resting here. This is my bridge. I'm resting on the canvas. I could use a stick with a little puffy pole that I made. All right. So maybe a little shading in the corner here. Even a little more deep shading in the corner here. Mm -hmm. Rinsing out my brush. Rinse, rinse, rinse. I love casting a shadow on an eyeball. It makes me so happy. I'm going to get a little of my pink. Smidge of yellow. Smidge of yellow. Smidge, 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 smidge. Bunch of white. Bunch of white. And I got to get enough pigment off of this so that it's most, it's like a, it's super soft, but I do want that pink cast to it. And then I'm going to come in here. And right here at the highlight, get to catch that. And a little bit of this pinker area here, see? Get that, get that, get that. Just pink it up. Isn't that nice where that pops? Now one thing that you can do to make this a little richer here is get a little of the quinacridone, just dust it on your brush and just add some of this pink. Is everything okay, babe? Yeah, oh. <laughs> I was like, oh no, what's going on? All right, that is looking pretty darn good. I think I can super get in with eyelashes now actually and then work this up because I'm not pulling my eyelashes on this one into my eye. So the eyelashes are pretty simple. They are white and purple. You may even want to, as a strategy, put out some soft body. This is like the consistency of craft paint, like those 50 cent tubes of paint. This just has a lot of quality pigment in it. So it just performs very well. I'm going to load up my brush. I'm going to come here and get as comfortable in my positioning as I can. And I'm going to just very lightly stroke up. This is a curved stroke. Some eyelashes. Now these are fantasy eyelashes, right? So there's some forgiveness in that and they can be wonderful and long. This is an area where people really, really, really get frustrated. Like really frustrated. Just putting some different little values of purple here. 
and then I'll come back with some white. So instead of going black with my eyelashes here, I'm going to actually use a very light color. It's an interesting strategy. I'm going to flip this on the side so I'm working to my strongest direction. Doesn't mean that you shouldn't, you know, make an effort to get stronger in other directions. It's just, man, maybe not in the middle of your gift painting, right? <laughs> That would be like, there's, I think there's works that we do that are for practice. Mm -hmm. And then there's works that we've got going on that are, you know, Lee. very serious. And let's not try something new, like a new product we've never tried before on a painting that we're selling or taking to a show <laughs> or giving to a friend. Leanne and Lynn say that they see dragonflies on the canvas, on the palette. I love that you guys are constantly finding objects on the palette. Seen some dragonflies. That you see. I mm. think that's super cool. I see a dancing cow. I'm going to get a little white on here. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Maybe it's a dancing moose. And it is the white. This white is going to really help us. I haven't really rinsed out my brush that much. There's still a little purple on here. I'm going to add some of these very fine lashes in this white to help them, you know, again, just moving the canvas to wherever I need it to be for my stroke to be comfortable. See? That's what we're doing. That's what we're doing. Come here. Just keeping it comfortable. Be comfortable, man. Be comfortable, man. Just very light pressure. I'm not alone. They see the dancing cow or moose in the blue, <laughs> in the lower right-hand corner. See my dancing cow? Let me cow? see. See the dancing cow? Oh, my gosh. You guys are, yes, I do and see And there's it. dragonflies. You all have not made it. You haven't made it up. I see all the stuff that you all are seeing. I think it's great. I think I love I love palette art. It's like just adding some dark purple here to give some value. You know what I'm going to do when you're done? And I'm going to come without rinsing off my brush a little more into my black and just make sure that my lash line is well thought and defined. See? I'm going to take a picture of the palette when we're done and I'll okay. post it up on the web page for everyone so that they can leave a comment of what they think <laughs> it is, is it, what they Get see in the description. Purple. I'm going to come on the edge here and just make sure that this is slightly deeper. See that? So I haven't rinsed it off. The black's still on there. And I'm coming in and deepening this, this outer corner. All right, there we go. So now, before we put in, you know, the center of the, we're going to put the center of the eyes, but really where this all is going to finish out is in the reflection of the eyes. And then I'll show you all how... To succeed at drips where John's going to get me a hot cup of coffee. A hot cup of coffee? A hot cup of coffee. Do I get to get myself a hot cup of tea? And a hot cup of tea. Uh, are we now part of the Imperial Army? I think so. Where there is tea and coffee. <laughs> Fresh water. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently lots of Well, now that I'm collaborating with Angela Anderson and I've seen everything that Mark Anderson does for Angela... John's job just got harder. <laughs> Not at all. I just need the help. And I don't have, if I had a wireless mic, I would probably just wander and go get it myself. But this thing is tethered and it'll take me right off my feet. Are you? <laughs> so definitely, you know, when looking at this, you're going to want to maybe glaze some white in here, depending on how much value and intensity that you're looking to create here. Um, you can make these any color that you want. I've seen some really good galaxy fire swirling rainbow. You know, and the basic principle of this being a marble will help you there. When you're painting eyes, if they're light colored eyes, so if they're dark eyes, right, if they're like a very deep brown or a black eye, everything's going to be about the reflection on the surface, and that's how you create beautiful black or dark eyes where the where the color in the pupil is very dark 
if you're doing light eyes, what you're imagining is that the light is actually going through the lens and hitting all the color and pigmentation. So there's a lot that you paint here. And on these, we're going to say that the light is coming slightly from here. So this side and this side are going to have the greatest amount of lighting. And then I'm going to just do a regular light reflection here and a solar flare. That is what is going on in my head. Other thing I'm looking at is, again, working these values. Spending time studying this will never, never hurt you. Um, on projects like this, I think scale matter. Like, it's, it's always great to change your scale a lot. I think it's significantly harder to paint small. But that's just because I have trouble seeing small. Um, painting really big is super easy, if, as long as you have an easel to hold the canvas. I think the important thing is to just have a body part. I think that's one of the things I think the most is imagining you hunched over, you know, when you're painting your lap on a painting on a table, making sure that you're painting in an ideal condition, you're counterbalancing that on a case. I'm not this is just a survival strategy. Um, if John isn't here to read it, and I'm not ignoring you. Fill in the space. Shall we look at our finished work? And oh, wait, I guess we picture in picture. So you are looking at the finished work. I love the vote. For those of you guys that are on the Art Sherpa official on Facebook, I'm thinking of doing a live and mm -hmm. reading the submissions because y'all are so creative and you're so interesting. That to me would be very interesting to like just do a Q&A in the Art Sherpa official on Facebook. Um, to sit in front of the computer and, and, and reading some of those suggestions. You guys, there were a couple like that. Just the suggestion is super imaginative. And then it's very interesting to see what you guys make. Whenever we do those polls, which we'll generally do the website. We always have some poll going on, on the website. The website, the groups, or the fan page. Sometimes on Twitter. Serious decisions are made on Twitter polls, John. Mm, we're buffering right now. To do right laundry now. or to paint. Mm, we're buffering right now, so it's a good time to pause. Oh, okay, cool. Buffering? Yeah. Did we lose our stream? Uh, no, but uh, but we're right now. It's I'm watching it. It says that we're that there's some there, there's some stream wonkiness. I'm gonna see if I can ratchet it down because it says that we're, huh? Hmm. I'm not sure what I can do here. So give me just a second while he's we're. He's gonna see what he can do for you. He's gonna see what he can do for you. Yes, he is. And this is his yes, he's gonna fix it song. We sing a song. Each other. Seriously. <laughs> Our dorkiness is unparalleled on YouTube, I feel. Company. Because no. I'm never like, what you doing? Oh, do you still still have that YouTube job? Yeah. What do you do today? <laughs> All right, we're gonna see if we can fix this. Uh, okay. It's. I'm just saying crazy things. Yeah, the primary stream is going badly right now. I'm not, hold on. Let's see. It may be. All right. We're, we're back up. We're back up. So we're going to see what's we're here. happening. All right. Okay. No, so on. I'm going to start putting in my eyeball now. Hold on. Let me just say, let me see if it, we're waiting to see if it's happening. If it's, oh, hold on. And now I got to reset all my buttons over here on the right pages. Okay. It says good. It, it says, says good. good. So we're good. Let's try again. All right. So I'm going to come and get some black paint right now. And I'm going to put some pupils, some nice big ones. I like to make my pupils open a little bit more. The reason for this is, is that um, a small pupil is kind of like a sign of unhappiness or aggression, and a bigger one is, is one of attraction or interest. So, you know, I'm going to make it a more interested pupil. This is the other reason why I do find gesso sort of interesting, because it's very matte. If you have trouble getting your pupils in the same space, get that T-square back out. You know what I'm saying? Put them in exactly the same space. You can totally do that. 
Because if you don't, sometimes it'll, you'll get cross-eyed, which can be very frustrating mm -hmm. if you're not intentionally trying to do that. If you are intentionally trying to do that, it's completely cool. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to get a little of my blue and a little black and a little glaze. And I'm going to come back just right over the surface of this and enforce this shadow like I like to. You know how I like to enforce this particular shadow. And then I'm going to paint some drama, drama, drama. Just get some phthalo green again, which is the green and blue. I'm going to come on the outside edge here and just sort of pull this in. This is my dark outer color. Make sure I've got this quite deep over here. I can always put my black back, so don't ever worry if you paint it out. Now all I've got to do is add a little white to my phthalo green. I mean my phthalo turquoise. I'm going to come on my edge here. I'm going to just tip this color in. See what we're doing? Yeah. Just tipping it in. Just a little bit here and there. Tip, 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 tip. Maybe a little bit here. Tip, 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 tip. Just tipping it in. That's what we're doing. We're just tipping it in. If you got it too light somewhere and you need to kick it back, you can always go into your deep color, right? And just fix it. Oh, Knock yeah. it back a bit. Don't feel like you can't. And I like to get into my green and a bunch of my yellow. White if I need it for coverage. I'm going to start coming in and working this. This is where the light is casting through the eye the most. And so we're going to see a lot more of the color that's here. Just pulling this in. Right there in the center. I'm going to have that. Come and grab some yellow. I'm going to come right here. We're just creating that space. And if you need to go back, get that black work out, you can do that. I have this weird little filbert I'm going to be using for uh, some of this eye work. Another nice thing is I can come with a little bit of my green and yellow and my fluid white. Mm -hmm. And just very, very smidgenly kind of outline my pupil. This is a very light action here a little of this into the eye. So you can see we're just going a little deeper in the process today. We're talking a little bit more about the process. How can we take this further? There we go. All right, see, there we go. Rinse, 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 rinse. Now I like to get a little of my white, but it's okay. Like if it, I like to get a little bit dirty with like a blue or a black or something, so it's not bright white. Even though the gesso will probably pull through it, mm -hmm. I'm gonna come here, and I'm gonna paint in my light source. See that there? Maybe a little one mm -hmm. right here. This is the same light source because that's what's reflected in the eye. That's doing its thing. Dry this off. 
Come load your brush with a soft white or thin white. Add a reflection in this inner corner and another one here. So that's like kind of like that there's like some tearing there. You can also add this bright on the eye. When you add these bright highlight reflections, what you're really saying is that the eyes are wet. Coming along here with just a little bit of that white highlight. Can you see that? Mm -hmm. Do the same thing over here. Let's see. Add a little moisture to the eye. And when we do that, it just pops, right? Okay. Might even say, uh oh, there's this unexpected amount here from tears or something. There we go. Now, I'm going to let all this dry because doing that star is like a real thing. Mm -hmm. I'm going to show y'all how to get better at these drops. I'm going to pull some clean water and I'm going to get a round brush. Get a good round brush that you trust. Get a good round brush that you trust. And if you don't mind, I'm going to pull my palette and put yeah, out I'm, fresh I'm, paint. I'm going to go get that palette though. Hold on a second. I'm going to take a picture of that palette. So, oh, wow. yeah. I'm not going to fold it. John's worried because I like to fold my palettes. So he's going to take that. And I'm going to put out my colors, a little bit of them again, because I'm going to want to thin them and I want them to be not too thick. I'm going to use my misting bottle instead of switching over to fluid paints to get some of my colors. Just put out a little bit. You know, you could keep using what you had. This is just something I got to do because I'm teaching this online. Do, 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 do. The star really is the jam, so it's worth hanging in, but you don't have to do the star. Mm -hmm. Not required to do. Already, though, aren't you kind of happy with your eyes? Mm -hmm. <laughs> You're kind of like, whoa, eyes, I can paint them. My two cents has put out a couple bits of white for you to lighten with. Well, I'm really at the end of this tube. Need more paint. White paint. Ugh. Oh, wait. Actually, I know where the little, little roller tubey thing is. Yeah, I think this one also, I I squeezed the, the um, congealed cap into the whole, whole series of things here. Yeah. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get these wetter than I normally would. I'm going to do three mists. See how the water is kind of pooling here? All right. So now I have that. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get my brush wet. And this lets, let's, I'm going to start talking about wetness on my brush in three terms. Level one wetness is a dry brush. That's when you touch it, you shouldn't really feel the moisture on it at all. It either has no moisture on it or so much of it is sucked out as to feel dry. Um, uh, acrylic paint wetness would be where you have put the brush in and dipped off this extra drop. That would be a two. You can feel the moisture, but it's not sopping. And three is where you're just letting all these drops come off. So we're gonna say that we're gonna get this to almost a three. We're not taking off the extra water. We're going to come here to the corner. I'm going to start up here. And I'm going to say, look, I want a drop coming down. But instead of just letting gravity be in charge of my drop, I'm going to be in charge of my drop. All right? So I'm pulling this first one down. Now, if another little bead comes, that might come down and chase that drop down a little bit. And I'm going to come over here to the right a little bit and drop down another drop. Then I'm going to take down further. If you want that to run down further like gravity would do it, now you can add a drop to it. See how that controls what you've got. Okay. I'm going to get my pink. And I'm going to swirl it around in this little kind of puddle of water I got going here. I'm going to add some white because the quinacridone is already pretty transparent. I'm going to roll off my brush and then I'm going to like let every, it soak up everything like a sponge. See how I can do that? If I go into my water and add more water to it, I'm at a full three here. Then when I come over here, I can carefully and in a controlled way bleed this down my painting. 
So this is probably one of those methods you would actually see in my regular art practice because I like to use drips, but I like to actually be in control of them because I want them to go where I think compositionally, compositionally they should be. Then I can even kind of drop some down. See how this is working? It feels organic, it feels natural, but it's not. You're deciding. I'm going to get some more deep quinacridone. I'm going to come here and sort of tap this around so this has a couple tones. Right? Now I'm going to come over and do the same thing on this side. And I'm going to help the drop decide where to go. Help that drop decide where to go. Come get your paint. Now if it if it loads heavy and it runs down further, that's okay, especially if you're doing it sort see how it's doing here? It's gonna go a little further, but because I had shortened the drop, it's not really gonna be that much out of my control. I'm getting my pink, pink, pink. I feel over here. I'm uh, pretty good. While this is all drying, this is one of those take advantage of what you got. All right, I'm going to get my pencil to help me, and I'm going to sit there and say, I'm going to make a star reflection. Now I can either do this with my T-square or I can freehand it, but what I'm trying to do is just make sure that my star isn't some crazy angle. I'm going to, while I have this, I'm going to rinse it out, and I'm going to just paint that super star reflection in. You can use the fluid paint. I do think it's super helpful. But as you can see here, I could just add water with a mister into my always away. And there's maybe like 20 other ways to do this, so don't ever feel like you're stuck. I'm going to do a nice long reflection up. A nice long reflection down. Goes as far as you want it to go. You're in charge. And a couple little radiating spots out. You can see this would be very powerful if we were doing a galaxy eye, which we could totally do galaxy eyes too. You could galaxify, it's no problem. Alright, so you're just getting that, making sure that is there. And when you have that and you're super happy with that, which I am. Woohoo! <laughs> Coming back to this. I'm going to load it back up to a three. That's where it's dropping off. And I'm going to come here and decide where my next strip is going to be. It's not just happening to me, I'm deciding. And then maybe a shorter one here. Alright. So that is the yellow and the red. So I'm going to mix the yellow and red together. And I'm going to get this nice orange, roll off, load up, come up in here, and I can even brush down my drip that's happened. See how that does? It bleeds like a watercolor. Oh yeah, you can turn around on the screen and see it. Oh, excellent. So you're seeing that. This is oh, what yeah. we're doing. See, I'm not... I'm not splattering. I'm not hoping things don't get out of control on my canvas. Not that that isn't fun. Dude, it's like finger paintings. Finger painting is fun. Q-tip painting is fun. And we all need that in our art practice. Sometimes you need to bubble paint. Right? Sometimes you need the fun. But it's also important to know that even in things in art that sometimes feel uncontrolled actually have a little bit of control. And so hopefully it's exciting to see another way to do the drip. I'm yeah, come over here. everybody's loving this drip process. This yeah, is really, really good. <laughs> it works. Very helpful. So you have to decide, do I want this full drip? Because if the drip is full and, I, and I'm and i going to put it right here, where's it going to go? Down. 
if I tip it, so this is like a wave, I'm tipping the weight. Oh. Your gravity working. Could stop it by drying up my brush Ooh. and pulling it up. You just, you just like vacuum the brush. You just see that again? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, you do a lot of drips, you get a couple tricks. <laughs> All right, let's do another one. We're going to okay. we're I'll gonna work. say, oh, oh, there it goes. It Boom. got away from oh, me again. Oh, you got it right in there. So I don't want it to go any further than that. So you just like, no. So that's what you can do. You're really not as out of control as you might think you are. The best art in this style will make you feel like you're out of control when you're really, really not. Because I'm doing it this way, I can completely think about the composition of the piece. I can even thicken this end thing so it feels like the water got heavy. Pull the excess water out of it. So when I add my next bit, it's not as inclined to run away with me. Gotcha. I hope this is exciting. This, this is, is really I'm great. Very no, no, everybody's loving these. This is probably something I should have made it into a 15-minute video. <laughs> well, we'll do it. We'll do a little 15-minute drippy eye thing. We got to do how to do the other eye and uh the only thing that I'll say to watch out for, whether you're left-handed or right hand is dragging paint. Oh, when you're using your hand as a bridge? When you're using your hand as a bridge. Left-handed artists completely get that concern. Right-handed artists are like, what? Wait. Yeah, dragging. See how I've managed to use the drip to create that feeling, but yet. Yeah, and the the ink will just wick out into the. Mhm. Mm into the wet spots. You can always come back and add more or change colors oh, or. No, no, I'm just like painting it around. It's a color I can paint it around. It dries. You can go go back over this. Yeah. All right. So you're in control. Okay, we're gonna come here. Let's uh let's talk about this yellow. Where is this gonna go? Let's have this be a heavy drip right here. See how the yellow is a heavy drip? Yeah. I'm gonna let that go down, I feel. Oh there it goes. Yep. But the choice is there. Getting some white into this because yellow is low pigment, right? If your stuff is dried out, you can always well, there it goes. It dripped mist off the it and thin it. See, this is another way of making your paint more fluid. So another thing here, the nice thing about the gesso, the chalk of the gesso over black paint. What is more likely to happen here, because we're really thinning this paint and we're not using a high flow and we're using a heavy body and you're really only supposed to heat thin a heavy body like 30% water for binding to still take place. But the chalk in the gesso, right? And if you are to spray varnish when you finish, you would have no underbinding even if you get a little crazy. So there's always a way around everything. Just something to think about. Come here. Does that make sense? Yeah. All right, I'm just dropping a little of this. I might need a little. I'm, I was a two when I needed to be a three and see how the paint wasn't really coming off. But now it is. That's a three. And that's something we should, we're going to talk about when we're talking about doing brushes and stuff. I'm going to avoid taking away my reflection because I really liked it. But I could if I wanted to, I guess. Get that three water on there. And see what I've got right here. Grab some yellow. There we go. I'm going to really let this be a full three and take its whole journey. I like how the, the ink chases down the, or I should say the pigment chases down through the water. Yeah, well, because in watercolor, where does the color go? Down? Where the water is. <laughs> I don't know. That's the whole secret of watercolor. Watercolor goes where the water is. Oh. Well, so that's acrylic true. paint can go where the water is not. But if you're using a water media technique like this, the pigment goes where the water goes. Yeah. You're in much more control than you could ever imagine. Yeah. I even like these drips than the first time I did them. Everybody's really digging this. They're like, yay, drips. Yeah. Now they're, one of the things that you guys have written me about, and I, you, I you, it's so funny because some of you guys will be like, I don't know who's reading this. Very often, it is me. <laughs> hmm. 
if I'm finding the message, I'm reading the message. Yeah. Um, one of the things I'll get asked is how do you get control of the drips? Or I felt like my drips, everything was great. And then I felt like my drips got out of control. Right. Yep. And suck it back up. You want some to go to the bottom of your canvas, right? And some you don't. And that's just something to think about while you're thinking about things. Think about things in the corner, mister. Oh, wow. Think about how you've been painting. I've been That's painting. a whole different painting show, isn't it? Messy painting. May we yeah. all make a beautiful mess. Yes. Oh, I like I like when the paint when the ink just when it just zips down there, so you can turn around and see on the cam on the screen how they get to see that. Oh, that's so nice. Yeah, I'm so glad cool. you guys are getting to see that. I think that's super relaxing. I can probably make whole videos of that and have millions of views. We should make some videos whole of that. channel based on this. I will drip these colors today, and people will just like. I'm gonna come Ooh. in after work. Right there, see, right now you get the, the, the that's the that's the good one. That right, and they're like, I'm gonna come in oh, after work. I like it when you do the yellow one or the, and the pink one because those were so vi so vivid. I think blue might be pretty vivid. Yeah, we could try that. You're gonna do it next, huh? Yeah, blue is next. Right, blue and purple here. might be pretty vivid. Pull blue out to here. Ooh. Super dripped. All right. Where's your blue? Oh, you're going over there. Here. It looks like it would be fun to be Katy Perry. Okay. So it should be. Ding ding. Let's see here if the stream survived that reset. It okay. Looks like it, it's saying it's giving me good indications. The stream has survived the reset. The reset. The reset. All right. Here we go. Oh. Taking this bright, bright blue and putting this down here. See? There you go. That fixed it. Oh, yeah, that was going good. How's that? You're in control. Whatever else is happening in your life here. You are the top dog. All righty. There we go. Last color. Oh, you you didn't go back from your color. I didn't go back from your color. Huh? Oh, I gotta put the drip out. Oh, oh! It uh -oh. went down the blue. Shoo, it did. I saw it. And that's okay. I like those little dribbles. Yeah, I do too. Dribble, dribble. And I like to blend the colors a little bit. So, you know, just feel like you can. Feel like you can. You can tell some pretty crazy stories in art. And isn't that nice? <gasps> you stopped it. Isn't that fun? Who's just had like a feeling of mad power out there in the YouTubery? Who's <laughs> going, this is the best news I've ever had. I like it. Whoops. That's so cool. All right. Oh, now it's going to keep sign. moving. It's moving. It's, I see it. It's going to go get the other piece, isn't it? No, it won't. Just take it. It's a nurse our power away. Oh, no. Look at that. It's there now. Wow. That's so cool. And it? You didn't even know. I did not know. <laughs> and I've been <laughs> here a little while. I think John is like tripped out. Like on occasion, I'll throw a new trick at him and he's like, I did not know that. There's a whole bunch of stuff I did not know. I am all the time going, what? 
So I've picked purple, and I'm going to do it at the outer, outer edge here, because where I'm signing it, that's where the color would be, would be purple. Guys. Well, look at that. We just did realistic, amazing, fantasy rainbow eyes with drips. We learned how to draw the other eye. We learned how to be controlled in our abstract painting of drips and splatters. I think this has probably exploded a bunch of interesting creative ideas in your heads where you realized I was in control all along. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I think that's the best thing about art is that, you know, <coughs> that white canvas, that's our space, man. And, you know, our we've, world. Had, we've had over 300 people here through this entire broadcast, even when we went down and up. And thank you, guys. We figured out some new tricks to try to keep that stream solid. So even when they when it bobbles a little bit, we now have some some tools to help us get that stream back. Thank you for coming out and hanging out. I want to see the eyes. You too. Yeah. Share them all, man. Yes. Share them all. If you have another kind of eye you'd like to paint, galaxy eye, mermaid eye, fire eye, we want to come see up it. with something creative and tell us in the comments below. Yes, we want to or see Or anywhere. It. You can just also email us or go to Facebook. I'm there all the time. It's all the time. Yeah. <laughs> Listening to you. Be good to yourselves. Be good to your each other. And I want to see you at the easel really soon. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, <laughs> guys.